Good morning, everyone. For those of you who may not know me, I'm Tom Nelson. I'm the senior pastor here, and on behalf, hi, son, how you doing? And on behalf of everybody that's here, we're all glad that we are gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about witness. Now, all this month I've been using alternate words or hiding what I was really talking about uh, for the vows that we use. First week, you remember I talked about being a communicator when we were talking about prayers. And the second, second week was more about um, being involved instead of presence. And of course, we put presence down and we missed the whole week because of Irma, just to remind you. And then last week, we talked both about giving and serving as commodities that we have in this world, precious commodities that we have in this world that God calls us to surrender at the foot of the cross. And, as, and each one of these are, are ways that we understand we are Well, this week I was stuck. The word that I had picked originally, because I couldn't find a word, and the synonym that, the, the, that just seemed to sort of work was spectator. Uh, it was one of the synonyms that when you, you know, click on a word and they give you the cinnamon, synonyms, not cinnamon, uh, that's a hard word to say fast. Uh, that's the one that came up. But then I got to thinking about it when I started to prepare the message. And it was, I, I couldn't use that word spectator. Because you see, what I think of when I think of a spectator is somebody that's on the sidelines. It's more like what we do than a witness. And today I want to talk about being a witness. A witness is a witness. Not somebody that stands over here and watches on the side. And so today I'm going to let you be a spectator for a few minutes with the hope that you will leave this place a better witness for the rest of our lives. Amen? Let's pray. God of grace, God of glory, God who's present with us right here in this space, we love you. We love what you've done in our lives. And we love that you call us to someplace greater. But Lord, we, there are so many things that stand in the way for us. And today, I pray as we talk about what a witness is, that we can see ourselves a little better. Could see ourselves in the place that you've called us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray this day. Amen. So the very first thing I would say, other than a spectator, a witness is an active sharing of faith. Amen? Yeah, you, you can't be a witness and hide it in the closet or under the bushel, as the scripture would say. Uh, the, where's the other place that we find witnesses to, uh, when we talk commonly? We find them in court. Right, right. And so a witness in court is someone who has to testify uh, about either uh, what they saw or what they experienced or they are an experienced witness who knows the, the information and, sh and have to share that in a court case. A specific way of saying it is a witness is a person who testifies under oath in a trial with first-hand or expert evidence. As lawyer Tom Lee shares, he actually was preaching one day, and his first time preaching, I believe, and it, but he was sharing this story. He said, an old judge in Nashville used to scold witnesses who were tempted to offer their opinions. No, no, he would say. The jury is not interested in your opinions. You tell what you have perceived with your five senses. What you've seen, what you've heard, tasted, smelled, touched. You be a witness. And so I think that's what we're called to do, is to share from uh, our experience and to be active in doing that. Now, if we look into the scriptures, we can see that there has been a witness all the way. The scripture itself is a witness of God's faith. And so uh, the Old Testament begins, and we hear prophets and others sharing a prophetic witness. We have the prophetic witness in the Old Testament. So the type of witness that we see is that they heard from God 
and then they testified. Ezekiel 3, 2, 34, 2 through 4 is an example. Mortal, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not bound up the injured, and you have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost. Harshness have ruled over them. When I read that this morning, you know, I thought that was a really good example of how God talks and the prophets wrote it right down. But I also thought about that's a word of witness for us today, isn't it? You, you can you feed the sheep. You gotta feed the sheep. And I, and I thought in particular it was a message for pastors. We can make people work like pumpkin trucks and, <laughs> and work and work. But are we really giving soul food? And so I think it's even a word for today. But the point is that God wrote it down as they heard it from God. So it was a prophetic witness. When, when, when we share the communion liturgy, the longer version, which we usually don't do in here, we talk about Jesus as that specific witness. We say he healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And, and so this is a prophecy or a word against what Israel was doing and an image of what Christ would do. And what we are called to do. Then you go on to the New Testament and we have what I would call an experienced witness in the New Testament. You know, share your faith. And, and we throw that out pretty liberally, right? We say, okay, I want you to go out this week. You've heard the message and you go out and I want you to share your faith with all you see. I say it almost every week in the benediction. But the problem with that is, as liberally as we say it, we're also as fearful of it that much. Because it feels awkward, Right? Hey, have you been saved? <laughs> I, 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 that just makes you feel awkward. Can you imagine leaving here today and going to lunch and the waitress says, Can I help you? No, but I can help you. <laughs> I've been to church today. Isn't that a little awkward? That's, and I think that's because it's not authentic. That's what, that's what we think what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to say, have you seen the good, have you heard the good news of Jesus Christ and go through this whole process? But what a disciple is supposed to do is share in faith, in word, deed, and action. So you may not say a word and still be a witness of God. Amen? How many like that idea? That's a lot better. No more than have you been saved stuff. Um, and, and the thing is, we're to be an expert on what we know. And I personally am not an expert on going through that steps of salvation. I, I'll probably make somebody mad here, but I don't like those evangelical kind of first thing you must do is uh, tell them this and read them this out of the scriptures right here. Step two, step three. That, that's not me. I can't keep steps in the, right, in the right order in most days, so why would I do it that way? So it's really about this relational experience and sharing that. There is, there is only one Savior. We don't do the saving. We do the sharing, the witnessing, testifying to what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've smelled, tasted, and touched. That's what we do. Jesus Christ has come into our life and we've been made new in his, in his life. That's something I can talk about. I can talk about what it was like before and I can tell them the difference that I have now in my life. And, and we have this new life. And in that new life, we come to know Jesus. We have a relationship with Jesus. We didn't do it right we accepted that it was right. See the difference? We didn't go through the steps and we're not being good, followed the rules Christians. We are people who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and let Him lead our life. That's what a witness is. That's where God calls us to be. To be followers of Christ and as we follow Christ and do as Christ showed us along the way and as Christ talks to us, that is our evidence. The only thing that I'm an expert on is how Jesus came into my life. 
I can't tell how Jesus came into anybody else's life. I can only talk about that my, my life. Otherwise, it's going to be awkward because it's not real. That is what you have or that is what's being offered to you right now. An experience with the divine. A relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's going to be difficult. We find this back this morning. I was reading my devotion for this morning from Luke 14. And Jesus was in a bit of a pickle. Listen to this. It happened that when he went to the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees. Okay, so we know who the Pharisees are. They're the ones that know all the rules, right? Richard? Right. <laughs> You aren't going to talk anymore now, huh? <laughs> They're the ones that know the rules. Well, this is the leader of the guys that know the rules. He's the leader of the Pharisees. And Jesus is there with them in this, on the Sabbath to eat bread. They were watching him closely, it says. And there in front of him was a man suffering from dropsy. And Jesus answered and spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. And he took a hold of him and he healed him. And he said to them, Which one of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well and will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day? And they could make no reply to this. You see, Jesus was sharing the truth. Jesus was witnessing to what the kingdom is about. Not about a bunch of rules, but about a relationship that calls us to do extraordinary things. That's who Jesus is. That's what Jesus we have to share. And the extraordinary thing Jesus did was save your life. When you accepted that gift. That is our story. That is the truth. That's a whole lot easier to tell somebody about. I'm here to testify by the Spirit of God that there's more to this life than what we're living. Amen? 1 Peter 1, 8 and 9 says, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's why we get excited when the heavenly music's going on here. We're celebrating what God is doing. We're not just coming for a show. We're coming to be the show. To be the love of Christ to the world and to celebrate how exciting that is. We're, we're getting too sedate. Look at us all just sitting here. It's time for us to get up and shout to the mountaintops. Amen. That God is alive and living in us. There's plenty in this world to throw us a different direction. It's, there's plenty that can happen even as you leave here today. But if you leave here knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord, it doesn't matter. Amen? But these words alone that we might say to someone else are not enough. It's, it's only a part of our witness. It's, it is all the things we talked about these past few weeks. It, it, our witness must incorporate our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. Amen? That's what we... Let's live of a disciple. That's what a disciple does. It's not lip service. It is a living witness that people respond to. When you pray, you have Christ by your side. Have you ever seen people who know Christ and who resides in them? You can see the presence of Christ in them. Their eyes just beam out and you just go, oh man, I know that person believes in Jesus Christ. I know that person knows Jesus. Jesus is on board. When we lay down those precious commodities of this world that we hold so dear, that we will try to take away from us, when we surrender our time and our gifts to God, that's when we witness. It's a transformed, a new way of life, no awkward moment. We are called to be a living witness. And when we live this faith, we have an impenetrable bond with Jesus. 
Jesus said, I am with you always. That's what we have. We don't know Jesus. We are filled with Jesus. Romans 8.16 says, very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The power that is behind us in our witnessing is the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to be in relationship with Jesus and, the, and have that power of the Holy Spirit. Anybody else want to join in? What is a disciple? Hebrews 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, witness lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross is a living witness to the love of Christ in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen